Our goal as a city must always be to ensure the safety of everyone involved. To do that, we must ensure that our officers have the right tactics, the right training, the right technology to resolve tense situations safely and securely. It is about helping them realize the multitude of responses that are available in tense situations. As one sergeant in the 15th district said to uh, both uh, Superintendent Escalante and myself, there's a difference between whether someone can use a gun and when they should use a gun. And we as a city must train for that difference. These changes are also not the first steps that we have taken as a city. We announced that any officer involved in shootings will be put on desk duty for 30 days so we can assess their fitness for duty. That's a change from three days. I also directed Interim Superintendent Escalante and Acting Head of the EPRA, Independent Police Review Authority, Sharon Farrelly, to review the crisis response policies that are in place so that we can, uh, so that we can see what needs improvement and what needs to be changed. Today we're taking additional steps to create more time and distance in these situations and other encounters to make environment safe and safer for all. We will improve communication between officers and individuals to make these encounters less confrontational and more conversational. And we will double the number of tasers to 1,400 while also providing officers the training to use them properly. I especially want to thank the members of the Black and Hispanic Caucus for their leadership and pushing for more tasers. With the right policies, the right procedures, and the right practices, we can change our officers' perspectives to help them ensure their own safety and the safety of others. We want to ensure that our officers are not just operating in either first gear or fifth gear, but to recognize the degrees in between so they can respond appropriately to each individual situation, where perhaps where force can be the last option, not the first choice. Our police officers have a very difficult and dangerous job. They put their lives on the line so the rest of us can be safe. And like all of us, they are human and they make mistakes. Our job is to reduce the chances of mistakes. That requires us to give them the right guidance, the right training, and the right culture to prevent abuses. Willful misconduct and abuse cannot and will not be tolerated. When that happens, it undermines all the good police officers who are out there and makes it harder for them to do their jobs effectively. Because at the end of the day, effective policing requires cooperation between the police and the members and the residents of the make up the community. And that cooperation is impossible without trust. So as we go forward, all of us will accept nothing less than complete and total reform of both the system and police, policing culture here in the city of Chicago. I want to applaud Interim Superintendent John Escalante and his staff for working over the last couple months to develop these new policies. Today, the Chicago Police Department is owning, embracing, and publishing one of the most meaningful policy changes in their history. Obviously, we as a city have a lot of work to do, and changing the policing culture will not and cannot be done just overnight. This, these policies are not the end of the challenge. They are the beginning of the solution that Chicago has faced for decades. We can change the culture piece by piece, policy by policy, to provide the safety that every resident deserves and to rebuild the trust where it has been lost. And that remains my ultimate goal. While some may call this de-escalation, as uh, Congressman Danny Davis said to me as we talked about this, ultimately what we are doing is injecting some humanity into the work of our police department and the police officers. That is what these new policies will help us do. I would, like, I would, I would, allow, I would now like to turn it over to Superintendent John Escalante to provide more details about these policy changes. John? Thank you, sir. This new policy change uh, is change fundamentally in the way we approach incidents. And it is based on the most important principle of the Chicago Police Department, and that is to preserve life and the safety of all persons involved. That includes citizens and police officers as well. In coming up with this new policy, we looked at 15 other major police departments around the country for best practice. Some of those departments include uh, New York Police Department, Seattle, Portland, Cincinnati, 
Cleveland. Uh, that's just to name a few. Our goal is to change the way officers think when they approach a critical incident by establishing time and distance to allow for more prudent thinking and physical space to promote a safer environment. We have seven, about 700 pages in the city. We're going to go to 1,400. It's to make sure that every vehicle out there during the night has a phaser in that vehicle. I think obviously if uh, you have eight officers, like in the Laquan McDonald situation, all cars are phaser, and none of them have it, we are a problem, and it has to be addressed. Part of what I'm trying to do, uh, and what John's trying to do, and everything, there's no area that's off from making changes, and we're still from looking at asking some fundamental questions. I want to caution, though, Tasers like cameras are technology. <coughs> They're a tool in the toolbox. They are not the toolbox. A ta issuing a taser to the cars without the training would not be sufficient. Issuing tasers and having training but not have the policy changes about as Superintendent uh, S. Bond, was without de escalation, but I would call out how to deal with such multiple situations in different ways. It would not work. Now, the taser and the policy we're announcing today go together somewhat like hand and glove. Uh, and they work together. It gives officers, to use the example or the anecdote that uh, uh, John Escalante was talking about, which is as you go up, it's an other option. The goal first is to create a situation where you're not getting anywhere and that everybody goes home safely. You know, a lot of officers in general are trained to make sure that they get home safely. In, when you take this all together, everything we're talking about here, what we said the other day, the goal is to make sure everybody goes home safely. 